Hey ya folks, my name is Promise. Welcome to more Dune Spice Wars. We are jumping back into this today because a new DLC has dropped, which introduces a new faction, House Vernius. Not one of the most well-known houses from the Dune lore, but pretty darn cool. These guys are the shipbuilders of the Empire, if I recall, from the planet Ix, and they are very technologically savvy. In fact, to the point where it's actually kind of frustrating for them. Because the lore of Dune does establish that the Imperium has banned all thinking machines, all AI, and there's a lot of complicated reasons that go behind a lot of that stuff. But these guys are like, that sucks! We could be so much more advanced! Maybe if we conquered Arrakis and we had a monopoly on spice, we'd have the leverage to force some changes and reforms, right? At least that is the justification for adding these guys into Dune Spice Wars. Pretty cool, though, I'm all about it, and this is a very interesting and unusual faction for us. We have to play a bizarre diplomatic game. It's actually very much in the advantage of a lot of other players to be in a truce with us in order to gain the effect of unresearched development that's been researched by us, and depending on what advisors we pick up, like this guy right here, we actually would gain benefits if they entered into conflict. So there'd be a strong incentive for people to leave us alone, at least for a while. But beyond that, you'd imagine this faction is very focused on research, and they are. They can actually file patents on developments that no one else has researched, plus we can also obfuscate different researches and so on and get additional knowledge points. So we're supposed to be very technologically advanced. And on top of that, if you pick up certain folks like Tessia Vernius over here, we'd get a lot of extra intel whenever we're not researching things. So between being at peace with people, lots of research turning into lots of extra intel, this is a perfect spying and assassination character, and that might be what we go for in this particular run. This does come with one really big downside, though. Neural nodes. You want your villages to get connected, but they're very tricky to hook up, and you'll understand a bit more about why later. If you fail to do so, you get a 50% resource production penalty, and this will definitely apply to a lot of your villages. It's going to be a big hindrance for us. In this game, I'm going to play with Bronsovernius, which makes my villages cheaper to annex so we can expand a bit faster. Plus, the furthest connected neural node gets an airfield so we can maybe redeploy a little bit faster if we need to. And I will go for Tessia. I think we want to try for this and see if an intel game is in our cards. Okay, here's the S Vault. Now, here's a weird thing about this, right? Normally, the first thing you want to do with every faction is you want to immediately beeline for conquering the Spice. I don't necessarily feel the need to do that. I do want to build up a Harvester, which we can do directly from here as a mobile drone. But the fun thing is, we actually don't need to control the region to extract the Spice, but we do want to be adjacent to our capital or any other village that has a neural network. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Let's grab a couple of Ornithopters. The units for this faction are a little interesting. Most of them require fuel cells in order to work. The only one that doesn't is the Subaoid Soldier, which are actually very weak. These guys have extremely low hit points for what they do, but we need to go ahead and start with these guys. So I'm gonna train two of them. They do get stronger the more of them are together. So if you're gonna have these guys, you wanna bunch them all clustered up. But we do eventually want to transition away from those. Let's go ahead and explore the region with the spice over here, but I don't feel the need to conquer this because I already know that I don't have to own this in order to enjoy the spice. I want to explore as fast as we can, find anything with plasteel, any of the minerals so I can get some extra solari, anything along those lines. That's what I'm really looking for. Now, there have been a handful of different changes in the game, and maybe we'll catch some of those as we go. For example, the ability to place down a rally point when you're deploying your new military units and so on. Uh, tech has been reworked a little bit. We're going to find that a few things have been reworked as far as their uh, layout and stuff. That's all nice. Ooh, energy sources might be something I want since we know fuel cells are extremely important for my military. Finishing up right now with my other ornithopter. Let's grab my drone. All right, so the drone right here is special for us, right? This guy is going to be very carefully sifting through the spice and will not attract a sandworm's attention. So you never have to worry about that. They do, however, need to be tethered. This is a special modifier here. As long as you are in a zone that is adjacent to one of your neural nodes, you're able to work. You need to be tethered in order for this guy to be gathering up the spice properly. But the good news is my capital counts as that. So that's why I don't actually need to go conquer this village right off the bat. So it changes up the early game. You're noticing that I'm not actually conquering anything right now, which is a little bit unusual, and I acknowledge that. But there's a good reason for it. 
It's mainly because I need to get a lay of the land to have some idea where I'm going to want to expand in the future. I need to know where things like the deep deserts are and stuff like that. Very important I figure that out. Yeah, okay. So what I'm looking for right now are connected zones, believe it or not. It's kind of weird. Right now I have five zones connected to my capital. I was hoping for six because then I could have done some fun stuff, but it looks like that's not going to be the option. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and conquer this village down over here. Lamlech. All right, let's go ahead and take my units. We're going to go conquer this. Shouldn't be too hard. Three of these guys are great because they get an extra 5% damage for each one of them next to the, each other. So that's 10% across the board. Yes, their HP sucks and you're going to have to do a bit of micromanagement, but it's fine. So we're going to conquer this real quick. And then over here in Lamrec, the first thing that I want to be building is probably going to be the Neural Node. So here's why this is weird. This can only be built in a village where exactly one neighbor is connected directly to the Neural Node. That includes your capital, by the way. So if I were to build a Neural Node here where the spice is, I cannot build one right here, right? This becomes very bizarre because it means that as you expand, you need to be extremely careful about where am I going to be placing my nodes, how many zones are connected, how many nodes can I realistically have, because every village I conquer that doesn't have this gets a 50% penalty. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump back into our developments. I'm going to start with the composite materials, probably move on to things like advanced engineering, and then since we have fuel cells, I guess I might as well move on to the geothermal condensers right away. There we go. The node is now connected, and you can actually see the line that goes between these villages. So I cannot build a node here, and I cannot build a node here. These two are never going to be an option for me. I can conquer them anyway, but it's not going to be worth as much. Conversely, I want to figure out where my next node is going to go, but I think it might make more sense to try conquering this zone. I need to figure out where my Plascrete is. There's got to be some minerals somewhere. Well, and actually, this solves it right here. There's more spice. All right, so I need a node to be next to the spice just so I can tether, even if I don't conquer this zone. And this is not an option, which means now I have to conquer this zone in order to build out my neural network. Okay, that's fine. And these guys even have my minerals, which means we had to conquer this no matter what. Okay, this works out. This is where I don't want to lose 50% production. See, this is what's weird about this faction is normally I'd be trying to expand way faster, but we have to be extremely deliberate because of the neural nodes. It's a weird play style. Okay, now we have our second neural network over here. And that means our other drone can get over here and it will remain tethered. No, it's not tethered in this zone very briefly, but over here it is. So even though I don't control it, there we go. We want to be adjacent to the spice. Controlling it directly is less important. Hello, even more fuel cells. Oh, this actually could be good for me. And of course, our first spy goes to Arrakis. Unsurprising, but we always want extra authority production. Notice, by the way, that the UI here got reworked. I actually think this is a lot nicer. Everything's kind of more available for us, not as much scrolling as you had to do before. Also note that we don't need any spying levels for a lot of these missions. So we can do a lot of this stuff, which is great. Also, here's a special spy mission just for us. Ally mechanical units are tethered remotely, which means even if I am in a territory that is otherwise not going to be connected to a neural node, or at least adjacent, let's say we're deep in enemy territory, we'd be able to use that spying mission to temporarily give all my mechanical units their full power. Very important for us. I do want to focus on getting some early knowledge as long as we can afford it with our Solari income. As you would expect, lots of knowledge is good for us. We want to get very far ahead of all the other players, so eventually we can start filing patents and block them from stuff, or at least get paid when they do want to get some tech. And actually, now that I'm looking at the map, we're at the very corner here. So building out the neural network here would be a mistake, because then I'm blocked and can't move anywhere else. I have to be building it over in this direction if I want to keep moving it like this around the mountains. This kind of works for me. Not to mention this does have some rare elements, plus it is a good hegemony province. So this will probably be my next target to conquer. Ooh, spice laboratories, these are nice. Knowledge per exploited spice field, and less fuel cell requirements. Oh my gosh, heck yes. I've got three of these dang things, so that's six more knowledge with no more investment on my end. That's amazing. These little guys are kind of funny to look at, by the way. It's like, we are just digging very carefully through the sand like a little mantis shrimp. You know, something kind of like that. Anyway. Let's go ahead and start conquering some more land, work our way toward the polar sink over here. Who's this over here? Is there someone already taking these places? I can't tell if these are actually occupied borders. 
But at least at the moment, <clears throat> the polar sink costs no authority to capture, which means uh, the AI is probably gonna make a beeline for this, and that's not exactly in my benefit. And the Choa Market is now available. Ugh. I don't know if I really want to make any investments in this, to be honest. We could, but House Carino is gonna make a beeline for it. It is a way for them to win the game, so I do need to be cognizant of that. And actually, I just realized we're technically connected to yet another spice field over here. So, we could go ahead and grab one of these pretty safely. This is actually a really interesting way of developing. Not actually taking the spice, just sort of skirting around it. Very interesting way to play the game. Okay, so I've got guild collaboration, which means I can get more fuel cells, so I'm doing fine on those right now. More training slots and stuff could be nice. Better mechanical units, more fuel cells, there's the siege enhancements, blah blah blah. Fusion plants, resonance drones, I don't know about that. Automated defenses is interesting way down here. Get some extra automated militia. And also enemy units in a region suffer some health per day as long as there's a node nearby. Again, this is really good for just kind of making a lot of incentives for people to stay the frick away from you. What about this? Enemy factions pay any extra authority to annex a village if it is kind of uh, next to my nodal networks? Uh, yeah, I guess that's interesting. What is the nodal core going to do in my capital if I were to try to build that? Connected neural nodes get extra fuel cells, and we get more knowledge. Yeah, that's pretty okay. I do get to make one ahead of time research here. Um, that's one of the benefits of getting my hegemony up there. So I could go for something toward the end of the game here. Just pick something up, like literally late game tech that would be helpful. Um, no penalty authority cost to annex or village in a special region. Uh, yeah, actually, I might pick this one up now. Seven days is a long time, I'm aware. But I have, I believe, one zone right here. So we could start doing some development here. And also, I'm about to pick up the Acid Lakes over here, I think. And we should be able to pick this up for cheap. And if I'm fast, we could go for that before the Landsrod Council comes back up. Though I really doubt we can move that fast. Yeah, only about half a day left. All right, well, the good news is no one was able to take advantage of the free Polar Sink, though. That makes me feel good. Honestly, between this, the Acid Lakes, plus the Moon Dew Veil, I'm not that far off of what I would need to go for a hegemony victory. It becomes kind of possible. Now, this would actually be very interesting for me. Raise a relationship to truce with every other faction. I'm going for this. I don't have a lot of votes, but I'm gonna try. The reason for this, I did win it. Wow, okay. So now I'm at truce with everyone. No aggression, but if we take a look at our development, if I were to quickly research the technological exchange, that's another six knowledge for me. Though let's remember, I'm pretty sure they all benefit from the uh, technology I've researched as well to some extent, but they'll probably want to leave me alone. There we go. So we have technological exchange. I'm up to a whopping 29 knowledge right now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, we no longer need to go for diplomatic maneuvers to try and get treaties. We could go for the heretical computing, get an analytical machine, a thinking machine. Oh my, heretical indeed. But if I go for lay of the land, I get even more knowledge. This is like going for a science race in Civ. Weird, I'm not used to this. And I'm gonna train up a couple of these railgun drones and just deploy them right over here. So as long as they're tethered, and they are, we should now be able to have some very long-range sniping attacks. Ooh, I just realized we're gonna be in conflict with House of Cause pretty soon. They're taking some stuff I wanted. I want this province right here. Yeah, that's not gonna be allowed for you. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll probably go to conflict with just one of these guys whenever I feel like I don't need the science. Ah, and here's a totally new feature that was introduced with the game once you hit 10,000 to Gemini. You get to choose a hero unit. And every different faction has different heroes. You know, you can get like Duncan Idaho if you're playing as the Atreides, etc. We have Nuwa Senva and Sitir Piliru. I don't know who these people are and what they're good at. So this guy's sort of stealthy um, if he's next to friendly units, plus can execute anyone in our territory. Also moves faster at short range of enemy units so he gets away quickly. Eh, I don't know about that. New Asenva, on the other hand, Faster drone recruitment and tethered units at long range, so my railguns get more armor and more speed, and spying operations last longer. 
which is great if I have to go deep in enemy territory with a tether spying action, and more damage against mechanical units and ignore half of enemy armor. Seems like the winner to me. All right, so our nodes are currently looking kind of something like this. I don't technically have to fight a cause. I could sort of keep circling around this way, try to get some additional energy sources. I am running lower on fuel cells, but remember, I should be able to use water once I have water batteries, which I haven't bothered. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, we can research this very, very quickly. So I, I think we can ignore this for the moment, but a cause, I feel like we need to start doing some damage to them. House Carino is going to be a bit of a problem too. Now, one thing I'm curious about, so we got a technology here with sequential thinking. The nodal network can optionally connect to neural nodes across a deep desert. Does that include right here or over here? If it does, then that means that normally I wouldn't be able to connect this to another node, but maybe I can build one along here and start a third branching path. That'd be good because there is yet another one of these uh, sites over here. And if I can get another, I absolutely can be going for hegemony victory. So we should definitely start researching that crafts workshop then. Because if I can build them in four locations, I mean, like, really. We, we may not have to go to war with anyone, honestly. This is a great position if we want to go for hegemony. I'm really shocked that the AI has decided not to research anything when it comes to the economy. It makes no sense. So um, that means they focus exclusively on spying, military, and or this... Um, I don't know what it's called exactly, social tech, which is an interesting choice on their end. Every one of these has been researched by at least somebody. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and try conquering this village right over here. I want to find out if I can connect this and create a third branching path. That gives me some options. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. So now I know that if I want to start making a push along House Carino, um, we can open up a whole new neural node and that would be completely fine. Now here's another fun little thing we can do with this house. So we can give something called a harmless gadget to all of the other players. So you got a house of cause, for example, that's an option. Yeah, they would lose some lance rod standing because they're gonna have a little analytical machine. They're committing heresy, which is interesting. A way of making them lose some standing wouldn't make a big difference, but then you pair that up here and we gain an information level. It's as if we have a planted spy. So between this and my uh, starting advisor, who's giving us the information level required for spying missions, all of a sudden, I think it would only take one level of infiltration from a spy in order to uh, get assassinations unlocked. I kind I kind of wonder if we could like really go for an aggressive murder here. Like really, don't overthink it. You know, this is just a just a nice. It's a nice little toy. Okay, it's a novelty item. Ah, uh, frick the worm! Ah, dang it! Who'd they freaking get? What did they freaking get? Uh, I think it was just one of my little Suboid soldiers. It's not a big deal, I guess. Oh, House of Cause has ended the truce with me. Now we're in conflict. Okay, so now I can do whatever I want to them and I didn't have to pay the penalty. Looks like they might be heading for my little thing over here. Okay, that's gonna get annoying, but I have a missile turret. Plus, I am working on the automated defenses for the extra militia. That could be helpful. Not to mention, I should be able to shuttle at least a handful of reinforcements over here fairly quickly, and hopefully the missile turret does its job. Come on, guys. That's right. Run, you cowards. Flee from me. There we go. That takes down one of the House of Cause knights. Which means now is actually a great time to go on the offense and take away Arxus. Ugh, and everyone voted for me to have weaker military units. Oh, that's just mean. Ah, I blame House of Cause. I'm gonna punish them now, even if I am weak. Who cares? Strong enough to beat you. All right, let's see just how strong I am. Oh gosh, way stronger than these losers. Yeah, it turns out having empowered uh, long range units is pretty darn good. Say goodbye to this military. And do I wanna annex this? I think the answer is yes. It's in a good spot to go ahead and continue building out the nodes. If we're gonna go down an assassination route, and I do think we actually can still do that with House of Cause pretty easily. Wouldn't be a bad plan to get myself an intel agency. That does mean we're going to trade away our two bonus of uh, extra influence and in intel in exchange for a hundred more votes. When you think about it, that's like a hundred more influence, but every vote. So in my opinion, that's totally worth it. The intel production, not really a problem. All I have to do is stop researching stuff. And thanks to my advisor, we can start cranking this out. Do we want to start with the assassination? I think the answer is going to have to be yes. Let's begin. Oh, I can buy analytical machines over here. 
Oh, I can just get myself as many agents as I freaking need while this is amazing. House Carino will give me 470 intel. Huh. Surprisingly acceptable trade. I can use that to murder him! That said, I am getting a little bit ahead of myself when it comes to doing the murder. Because I really want to be picking up things like stealth gear, 50% chance reduction of detecting a mission, and then of course there's the infiltration cells. Uh, the infiltration cells in neighboring a region connected to the nodal network do not count toward the maximum, really. So the two that I've got here would be free, and I can place down two more? Interesting. I don't think I need that, but that is interesting. Also allows for the training of assassins. Now see, I do need that. If I am going to try to murder a cause, I want these infiltration points to remain, and I don't want any military units around here that can detect and remove them. Best way to make sure we successfully assassinate, I think, honestly, is just gonna be killing any units that come to both these villages to make sure they can't get rid of my cells. So, we can train assassins now. Definitely wanna get at least one of these. You can only ever get like one at a time. And they cost 200 whopping intel each. Ouch, that is a lot, but it's okay. Let's begin the assassination. If you don't remember how this works, basically we are hoping to remain undetected for as long as possible, and if we are undetected with three agents assigned for intelligence, this will be done in about 15 more days. The second they find me and start doing counterintelligence, that's going to reduce our effectiveness substantially. But, uh, even if our progression factor decays down, we can send an assassin to one of these infiltration cells to bring it back up to 100%. Keep doing that, and even with their counterintelligence, we're fine. The only thing that can really mess me up here is if they are able to send military units down here and get rid of all infiltration cells. If they do that, they can effectively stop the assassination completely, which is why I'm going to be keeping an eye on both these regions, and the second I see a military nearby, we intercept and we kill them. Although it looks like the Fremen are coming over here and causing issues. Uh-oh. Wait, no, 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 no. Don't destroy this. It's one of my infiltration cells. Don't do that. Gosh, dang it. They're trying to liberate the city. Oh, good lord. All right. Well, I'm, I'm still kind of okay, but... This is just irritating. And House Carino just ended their truce with me. Okay, that's now a problem too. Right, let's get over here and get some like missile turrets and stuff. I think they're coming for me right now, actually. It's fine, you fools. Turns out I've actually got shuttles in position. I can just send all my troops over here and we'll deal with you. Oh, he's sending everything he's got over here. Oh, that's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. What a huge commitment you are making to this fight. Yes. Oh, and they detected me. Okay, and now House of Cause will send two spies immediately to try and stop me. And what's going on over here? Oh, gosh, dang- No, come on! What is it with these rebellions? <sighs> right, if they are able to liberate the city, then I lose that liberation point to- Gosh, dang these people! Why is it so hard to just let me do a good old-fashioned murder? Huh? Well, anyway, thank you, Fremen, for freeing up this spice, I suppose. Let's get in here and prevent these guys from breaking free. I need a place to send my assassins. This isn't optional. There. All right, House of Cause gets to keep their stuff. Now, let's send an assassin, because our progress factor has dropped down to 48%, and I don't accept that. Assassin arrives, progression factor back up to 99%. Perfect. Why did I lose an agent on spying duty? Did somebody get killed? No, it's because we lost one of the infiltration cells. <laughs> yes, right, fair. All right, so stop all research for a moment. Now I'm making 35 intel. That's really good. So I can keep affording to get more spies, or sorry, assassins for days. However, I do not allow you to bring your soldiers. Go, go, no, 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 no. We're going to go kill you. Yeah, see, he's trying to do an investigation right now. But we're fast enough that we should be able to get in here and kill him before he completes it. This is costing me an absolute ton of intel. An absolute ton to maintain this dang thing. Oh, gosh, why did this have to be so inconvenient? Oh, and I just noticed that Carino's trying to kill me. Right, we should probably try to do some cell searching ourselves. Come on, we're so close. Just die already. Boom! She is removed from the game by a cause. So, that gives me free reign to expand and take over whatever the frick I want in this entire area of the map. But first things first, we've now got to go and punish Carino, who's still trying to kill me, and I'm still trying to root out all their cells. They've actually done a pretty good job of hiding them. The AI sometimes likes playing a cell in, like, really weird spots, so you wouldn't find it. It gets very irritating sometimes. Oh, when did the Fremen become hostile to me? I don't remember that happening. Well, they are. Okay. 
And now I'm all of a sudden being forced into a truce with everybody. <laughs> what the heck? But the Fremen immediately declared hostility again. Good lord. Why do they gotta do things like that? Alright, fine. And I found the last infiltration cell, which means Carino is no longer able to murder me. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuel! Hey, Carino, would you like a totally harmless gadget? Yeah, he would. <laughs> Let's go ahead and punish the Fremen. I'm gonna murder their hero real quick. I don't know if you ever get your hero back once they're dead. Is it permanent? I think you actually can. There is something in Dune lore where you can kind of sort of resurrect a person. Though I don't remember the exact specifics on that one, so I may be wrong. Bye, Ornithopters! And I've got three spies now working over here on the Fremen. Give it some time and we will be able to assassinate them too. Or, of course, just sit back because hegemony is slowly ticking away. Oh, and once again, House Carino decides they want to die. Gosh dang it, they keep waiting till I'm just out of position. It's smart, but it's a little irritating. Could you knock it off, please? I wonder what my flying units look like. We have the spirits. They have to be tethered, or they're always tethered, sorry. But they get stealth inside the territory of a faction and truce. Interesting. As opposed to our big ship, which automatically tethers everything around it. Ooh, that's good. Well, I'm already trading to the Spacing Guild. It's just going to take a very long time to get enough guild favor. I feel like as this faction, I should actually get a bonus to my... Um, I should get a bonus to my favor with the Spacing Guild. It just makes sense. After all, we're mostly shipbuilders, right? That's the lore? All right, well, we gotta do the same thing with the Fremen that we did with the cause here. They've detected me, which means I need to get some assassins in position and make sure they do not root out my infiltration cells. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to go and detect my cells. Absolutely not. Whoa, where do these renegades set up right next to me? Well, that's highly unfortunate and annoying. Rapid response team, go! For frickin' sandworm's sake. Okay, hang on. Move, sure, move, 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 move. Alright, I got a new toy, which should work really well for me. I got a resonance drone, which is granting an electrostatic little field around all of my drones, which means anything that comes in melee range is going to absolutely melt. Also, we successfully murdered the Fremen. Bye! And here's my giant flyer, the folder relay. Nice. Space folding teleport all units at long range toward any region connected to the nodal network. What? Let's uh, let's test that one, shall we? We're gonna place you right over here, all right? And where they go? Whoa, whoosh! Woo! That's a nice trick. Look, I know that at this point, Carino can't do a dang thing to win the game, and we are guaranteed to win at this point just by sitting back and doing nothing. But for the sake of it, I do want to go and blow his stuff up. So let's go ahead and sabotage the frick out of him. I want to see what the full power of this drone army can really do for me, including my giant ship. It's got a Tesla cannon! Pew, 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 pew! For whatever reason, their base has decided that taking on my ship is the best decision, which means my units are taking no losses, and we're just, uh, we're just gonna pew, pew our way to victory. Pew, pew. What's amazing to me is how strong it is. It's still holding on. Its armor isn't going down at all. I know they changed um, how unit uh, armor is removed or shredded. It doesn't appear that I have a single unit that actively removes armor though. Oh no. Okay, so that actually means that taking down um, the base is gonna be very, very difficult. Like difficult enough that I really should consider pulling back, getting my supply back up, and then dropping their defenses one more time. Wow. I'll tell you what, I got a fight engineer for a reason. I'm gonna set up a repair station right here. Everyone heal up! All right, we'll try this one more time. Yeah, so I don't know how I'm supposed to make this easy to kill. I feel like this should have melted by now, but it most assuredly did not. That armor is really doing a lot. Doesn't stop me though, that's one base down. Anyway, I don't really need to do anything else as far as killing these guys, so let's just teleport over here real quick. Wait for these guys to appear. Boom, there it is and just go grab literally any villages at all. I'm, I'm this close to winning a hegemony victory, which is not what I expected, but there you go. And don't get me wrong, I fully know we could have won this a while ago. This is basically me just toying with my food, and I don't regret a dang thing. The new armor changes really do have a lot of implications, though. I'm trying to think that all through. I'm curious if the other factions also have no proper shredding units left. And if that's the case, militaristic victories are a lot harder so what are we left with? Going back to hegemony being the classic, just to keep expanding until you win? Assassination, I guess? 
Yeah, I guess those do become the two preferred methods of winning the game now. Maybe in multiplayer as well. Oh, House Carino got their own ship, the Kronos. That's cute. Doesn't matter at all, fool. And we win the game. We are the undisputed hegemon of Arrakis. And now that I hold the monopoly on spice, I think I'd like to push the Emperor to revise the no AI rules. Ha ha ha. All right. House Vernius, very interesting faction. I definitely expanded in ways I usually don't. And it does lend fairly well to the assassination victory, but even then, the amount of intel we needed was still kind of ridiculous. It was still pretty hard to pull off. So yeah, I don't know. It's a very fun faction, for sure. It definitely plays different than a lot of the others, and I feel like it's pretty strong. The drones are actually really good, as long as you build properly for them. I do think the one thing that people are going to balk at is the price point for this DLC, because you're basically playing 12 bucks just to get one new house faction. Still, for big fans of the game, I think that that actually is a pretty good faction. Fun to play, definitely worth your time, and as always, I would say that Dune Spice Wars is a very underrated RTS. So worth giving a go in your spare time. Not a sponsor, just my personal opinion. Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.